I want to share with you the continuation of the teaching on the battles of destiny. Destinies are the most fought realities of all realities on earth. Destinies. And for your information, destiny, your destiny is what makes you relevant. So what we call destiny is at the very core of your relevance. You see, why you sit here, I used to be a Catholic priest. And for, for years, and um, after years of training and formation and then actually practicing and living the life of a Catholic priest, and sincerely, and full time. I've never been a part time minister. I have never been. It has never been an understanding. So I was fully, completely, totally Catholic priest according to my conscience. After that, I walked away in resignation and then do what I do at the moment. The only thing that makes me who I am standing here. The only secret of doing this, I want to share with you, is not fasting and prayer. I do fast. I do pray. But I know the places of this. Fasting and prayer does not make a destiny. I'm standing here because I'm staying true to my destiny. I'm staying completely true to my destiny. I have been appointed and ordained before I was born for something. Your destiny waits for your birth. You don't create destiny, you discover destiny. The reason why a lot of people struggle in life is because either they don't, they don't stay true to their destiny or they don't like their destiny. They don't fully embrace their destiny. And when I mean destiny, I mean destiny as in a godly way because destiny has two faces. Like life generally, life, life has two faces. There's a glorious face of life which is God's life for you. There is the corruption face of life which is the enemy's version of life for you. So when I'm talking about destiny, I'm talking about destiny as in God's vision for you. So destiny is what you've been appointed for. Destiny is an appointment over your life for a purpose. The correlation, the correlating word with destiny is purpose. The other side of destiny is purpose. Purpose is the working out of destiny. Desti purpose is the manifestation of destiny. So when you hear about destiny and purpose, it's like the tree and the fruit. The fruit is purpose. The fruit of a tree reveals the destiny of that tree. It is from the fruit that you know. So when you see a purpose manifesting, you know what somebody was. So these are connected. These are so destiny is appointment. There's a scripture. Let's look at this scripture. Luke's Gospel, chapter two. Luke chapter two, verse twenty-five to thirty-four. Let's let's quickly run through this. Can you rise while we read this? If you are done writing, can you just let's read this together? Go with me. And behold, there was a man in Yahushalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed, come and read with me. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he will not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So, we are talking about revelation now. That has been revealed to him. Which means, what we are going to hear from him, because he's going to say something that is documented. What we are going to hear from him is revealed knowledge. 
It's revelation. Because it's been revealed to him. It means it's a decoded mystery. It means it's a mystery unveiled. And he had, it had been revealed to him that he will not see that until he had seen the Lord's Christ. Next verse, verse 27. So, go with me. So, he came by the Spirit. So, we're still talking about the Spirit. He came by the Spirit, continue, into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him, according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen mm, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined. Shh. Pay attention. Pay some attention and keep staring at that scripture. He is destined. He is appointed. He is set. He is laid. He stands. He is founded. He is destined. He's been marked out. He's been set out. He's been laid out. He's been made ready. Made ready for the fall and the rising. That means he will not have to pray for people to fall or rise because of him. Destiny is not a function of prayer. But fulfilling destiny, you need to pray. Fulfilling destiny means putting destiny to work according to God's agenda for you. It means leaving out the mystery and the intricacies of your destiny. You will need to fast and pray and work hard. But as for destiny, you don't pray it in. It's already there. Jesus fasted and prayed not to be Jesus but to fulfill the purpose of being Jesus. He spent the night praying before appointing, appointing the twelve. But he never fasted to be the son of God. He did not fast to be the Lord's Christ. He did not fast. <laughs> you have to understand this thing. That means first of all, you have to find out what are you appointed for. In life, what are you set for? What are you made ready for? What I mean, made ready for the things that come to you almost effortlessly from within you, viscerally. There are two kinds of things you do in life there is the thing you do that flows from outside, you are trying to mimic and imitate what happens around you, but there are things that happen from within you. That one is. You are making yourself known. That's your who you are. I don't know what I'm communicating. It's like urinating. Urinate the color that is inside of you. You don't urinate to resemble the, the color of the urine of others. Your yours, yours comes from within. That's destiny. Can I tell you something? Wealth, strength, power prominence, glory, shame, defeat, dishonor, disappointment, they are all tied around destiny. One of the greatest things we need to do is to 
find out for ourselves and find out as, as our children are growing up, what are they made ready for? What are they made ready for? Let's, let's learn. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is what? Destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. That's it. I just want to announce to you that everyone that is born into this world has what destiny by destiny will mean what somebody is ready for. Ready for means on that day, you don't pray to get ready. Somebody who is talkative, somebody who just has grace to talk, does not pray to talk. Doesn't pray to talk. It's just about when an opportunity comes up, the person does what? Because he's been made ready to talk. He has the destiny to talk. There are two forms of comedian. There are those who are trying to do comedy to get attention on Facebook and social media and find something to do. There are those, as soon as they stand here, you'll begin to laugh. They are made ready to make people laugh, to make people re relax. There are people who need to learn, study, master, and work hard to make people laugh. There are people that their life is, is laughter. There are many medical doctors that were just to make people laugh. And if they are to be extraordinary in their medicine, they must bring laughter and fun into it. Make their patient comfortable. Why I'm saying this? Because issue of destiny, we cannot over-spiritualize it. We have to make it simple enough for us to know that every child that is born to you, your children have destiny. The best way to train children, you know, is actually to follow children. Be seated. Do you know the difference between how the Western world, the people of the Northern Hemisphere, how they train and raise their children and how we train and raise our children? You know, there's the basic difference. In the Western world, parents and teachers follow children. In our world, parents and teachers drag children behind. That is why we consume, we don't create. Everything we enjoy in Africa, almost everything is imported. It's brought in. We don't create. It is not our fault. No white man has a superior mind. The secret is in orientation. Children are raised up either as failures or as success. So, if you have been a mother and a father, you know your children are most excited when they are outside at the youngest age. If you have not discovered, you have never been a mother. If you have never discovered, you've never been a parent. Children are crazy and excited in open spaces outside. Why? Naturally, their brains at that age, they find the greatest help of development outside because they explore. How do we raise children? We raise them. Don't touch this. Kutugisong. But at that age, they want to touch. Their brain needs to touch that. That is how they learn. That's how they, they study. That's how they will become scientists. That's how they will become inventors. By touching those things and the brain is registering, they are natural scientists. And so in the Western world, you will see parents going out with children. And children wander around and they just follow them and make sure they are secure. Our children, we want to go out, we lock them inside. <laughs> Or we are even staying inside. We make sure we shut the door. Don't let those children go out. And they grew up with mind, mental blockades. I was in the seminary. Let me share an experience with you. I was in the seminary the first two, three years. I think the first two years, let me be honest, the very first year, 
I didn't even know where the library was. Sorry, I knew. Just that I didn't know. Didn't know. I didn't know the use of library. I just didn't. I could not. I could not go beyond my immediate environment. I discovered it was later on as at my third year in the seminary that I was comfortable going to sit down in the seminary, I mean a library, and to explore. Why? Adventurous as I was, my nat the way I was brought up began to show itself at that stage of my life. Whereas people were doing making researches and all that, I didn't understand what it means to go do research because I was brought up to Kuka limitation poverty is already programmed in children when you don't allow them to explore so in, it, in that exploring why am I saying this I'm trying to share this those of you who are young parents you're going to pay me for this it is in that exploring that you will see their destiny I have two children. One loves wire. One just loves wire. Loves to touch every electrical appliances. He sees television, but find out where is this thing connected to and goes to the wire and just wants to know and all that. The other one, my first, my, my first child, my daughter, from the earliest days when she was about four or five months, when you come in and carry her, she looks at the pattern of your dress. She notices the difference in color. Now she chooses what she wears. That means you are paying attention to what she's made ready for. Which means in matters of beauty and aesthetics, she will not need to fast and pray. I'm just sharing, sorry for talking about my, my own children. I'm just using that to help you understand. Now, this is what destiny is about, which means if you are made ready for things that have to do with aesthetics and beauty, and you're, you see people making money from molding blocks, and you leave issues that are natural to you, what you were made ready and set for, and you go and do the one that others are prospering, you will be a failure all your life. You will struggle, you will never be happy. This is where envy comes in. Do you know envious people are people mostly who have not been able to maximize who they are. Envious people are never happy people. It means there is something insufficient about them. When you know who you are and you live in your strengths, you have no time. You are too busy to be envious. I am too busy personally in my life. I'm too busy to be envious. I know there is something called envy. Just that I'm too busy. I don't have time to envy somebody. I know who I am. I know what I'm set for. I know what I'm made ready for. Now, if I ask you this question, do you know your destiny? We're trying to talk about destiny. Do you know what you were made for? Do you know what you, are, you were made ready for? What is it that you don't need to struggle to do it? Some people grow up, they don't even know because they were never allowed to explore. Some marriages is a place of condemnation because the husband is against what the wife is made ready for. Absolutely. That's why, as a young woman, as a young man, don't talk about marrying somebody. First of all, you have to know what are you made ready for? What comes natural to you? What is your direction? What's your orientation in life? What are you destined for? Now, number two, the person you want to marry, do you connect what she's made ready for? Because if you don't connect and submit to what she's made ready for, marriage will be a battleground. One person will die for the other person to live. But in marriage, once one person dies, both die. So, issue of just talking about destiny in church. I don't want to just talk about destiny in church like, you know, Holy Ghost fire thing, just make it very spiritual. I'm trying to bring it down to the most basic, as, sim as basic as raising children, marrying your wife, as basic as relating with people. What kind of thing do you do? If I were, if I were not to be a preacher, I could be a comedian. I have, I'm made ready to stand before people and to raise people's hearts. 
it's natural to me whether i sing or talk you know almost all the time when i'm preaching i bring comedy in by default i cannot help if i don't make people laugh it doesn't make sense to me <laughs> and those who are too serious i'm a very serious minded person but i don't like those who are serious I'm the only most serious person and it's enough. Any other person that is serious, I suspect you. <laughs> Let the world just endure me, the most serious person, just leave others. Others, you know, I just love it that people can relax and have it beautiful and fun and all that. I was made ready to stand before people, raise their hand, inspire people. I was made ready for that. Whether I'm preaching, I inspire. Whether I'm teaching, I inspire. If I'm singing, I inspire. Whatever I do, if you just connect me closely, you discover I have the grace of inspiration. Why? I am made ready for that. I don't fast for that. That's who I am. That means all of God, whatever God wanted me to do, has to do with that gift. Which means the moment I venture out of it, I'm dead. And that means somebody like me, if you put me in an organization that people don't like me standing before people, it means you have killed me. Because the gift of inspiration, this gift of inspiration means this, oh, that you have to stand before people. Oh, uh -huh. Who are here? Tell me. Who are here? Give me a microphone. Tell me, say, who are here? Shall I slap you? <laughs> oh, praise God. Let me pray for you. Can I pray for you? I think it's not too late for you to come to the place of discovering what you were made for. The scripture said, This child was is destined, is made ready, is appointed. What were you appointed for? Before we talk about that appointment in Christ, naturally, what are you appointed for? Because everyone carries an appointment. Your relevance in life, people honor you according to your appointment. People look for you according to your appointment. People also despise you because you are not in your appointment. Your appointment is your, where your wealth and your honor is. And can I tell you something? Your appointment is where your battles are. Let me pray for you. We shall talk about battles in a short while. Lift up your two hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. In every way I have been appointed for. Every area of life. That I've been appointed for. What I have been appointed for, what I have been made ready for, I step into the grace to fulfill it. Say, I step into the grace to manifest it. I step into the grace to showcase it. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me hear your amen like fire. Raise your right hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every battle against my destiny, by the death and resurrection of Jesus, I destroy it. I overthrow every pharaoh against my destiny. I overthrow every Ahab against my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. If your destiny is where your wealth lies, if your destiny is where your prominence lies, if your destiny is where your glory lies. If your destiny is where your importance lies, then all your battles in life are in the place of your destiny. Please don't joke with this revelation. This is a very important information. A lot of people don't know this. Let me, let me help you. Pay attention this week and find out in life in what areas have you struggled most? In what areas are you fought most in life? Where do you battle most? Where do you fight most in life? In what area of life do you fight most? Where do you see yourself fight and people fight you? Where do you find contention? Where do you find difficulty and struggling? Find out. That may just be the area of your destiny. Because where you were meant to shine is where darkness will fight you. 
The scripture says, this child is destined for the rising and the falling. This means, this child is made ready for trouble. The Pharisees had issues with him. The scribes had issues with him. The Sadducees had issues with him. The Sanhedrin, the highest ruling authority in Israel, had issues with him. Herod had issues with him. Um, Pilate had issues with him. Almost everybody, even his own people in Nazareth, had issues with him. He went to Nazareth in Luke chapter 4 and people looked at him. What is this one? This knowledge, where is this one from? Why? Because of his destiny. His destiny, he is the light. It is the light. He is the light in Galilee. Look at Isaiah chapter 9. Let's read from verse 1. Let me show you why the people in Nazareth, which is in Galilee, why they fought him, why they despise him, why they rejected him. Because he has an appointment to bring light and be the first good thing from Nazareth. The people you are supposed to bless is where you find rejection. I don't know where I'm talking to someone. Let me just share this with you. The family that a woman or in marriage is to be brought into to change that family. That family fights that woman before marriage. That family fights that woman during marriage. That woman, that family continues to fight that woman after marriage. This is how it works. And many women have said no to marrying families they were meant to go and change because of the lights they carry, because of the fight that I have to face. That's why you need mentorship. You need a teacher. You need revelation. You need something higher than natural wisdom to prosper in life. Look at, he said, Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. Let me have this in NIV. NIV makes it a little bit easier for me. NIV says, nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, humble the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, it will honor Galilee. Galilee is, in, is within the land, the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. So Galilee had been known to have a humbled past, humiliated, humbled, broken. It is in Galilee you have Cana. It is in Galilee you have, uh, you, you have Genes Genesaret. You, it is in Galilee, no, you have um, Capernaum. It is in Galilee you have uh, Nazareth. It is in Galilee of Cana, Nazareth, uh, Capernaum, and all those places. It is where Jesus guy started his ministry. I don't know where I'm talking to somebody. That's where Jesus Christ started his ministry. He said, I'm the light of the world. But for the light of the world, it had to be appointed for something. As light, it had to connect Galilee. He was not born in Galilee. Joseph was not from Galilee. Mary was not from Galilee. In the time of census, Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem. He's associated with David because he's associated with the, nat with the native land of, Bethlehem, of David. He was born in Bethlehem. You had the foster father called Joseph. That gave him the lineage, the lineage of David. And Mary was betrothed to this man. That is why he's called the lion of the tribe of Judah. Though not biologically fathered by Judah, but adopted to fulfill the destiny of Judah. But he did not start his ministry in Bethlehem. I have not even heard of any time that after his birth, that Jesus Christ went to back to Bethlehem. Why? Bethlehem already had a beautiful destiny. Bethlehem means house of bread. It's a place of abundance. David was a mighty hero there. Bethlehem did not need another hero. A place of darkness needed light. And that's where he was rejected. I don't know, is your, are your eyes open? Now, look at this. In the past, he humbled the land of where? Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentile by the way of the sea along the Jordan. When I saw that, a couple of things about Galilee. 
Galilee was despised by Jews from other territories. Why? Number one, Galilee is by the sea, open to nations it's like Ibaka. It's like Calabar. It's like Lagos. Any port city is where you meet people from different cultures. It's where you see crime. It's where you see all sorts of death. Go to Ibaka, you don't know which one is a human being, which one is a demon. Go to Lagos, you don't know who is from where and who is from what. Any place that is open to the sea means that foreigners will have, and will have free exit and free entry points. Now, among the Jews, they, and they, they, they prided themselves in their purity. It means they were different from other nations. We are not like the Gentiles. When you hear the word Gentiles, it's from the, the, the Greek and, and Latin word Gentes. Gentes means other nations. is derogatory. It means these other people without circumcision. These other people without covenant. These other people that are not known for, by God. These other people that do not belong to God. And Galilee was by the way of the sea. Along the Jordan, it means it was open to the Gentile. That's why it's called, it will honor Galilee of the Gentile. So Galilee was not esteemed, was not honored, was not respected because of his giving accommodation to Gentiles. Accommodating people from mixed races. Okay, next verse. What is it again that is said about Galilee? The people walking where? The people walking where? That's Galilee. These were people associated with darkness. And now you will see that as soon as John the Baptist was arrested and put in prison, Jesus returned to Galilee. And that is where he called the disciples from. Peter, John, James, all these were guys from Nazareth. I mean, from Galilee. That is why in Jerusalem, they were treated like, who are these guys? You see, Peter, when he was, when he was denying Christ, people say, even your accent. You know, it's like, see the way you people speak from Galilee. They were treated fishermen, uneducated people. Look at, even your tongue serve, like tongue. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> More than that. You already know what I'm talking about. Galilee. But that's, where the, that's the destiny of Jesus. So when he said, this man is, is destined for the rising, the rising of those in darkness and the falling, the falling of some people in darkness also. The rising of those in darkness who want light and the falling of those in darkness who don't want light. That's why when he went to Galilee, his own hometown, in Luke chapter 4, to go to the Nazareth, to the Nazareth community, I, I, I mean, their, their synagogue, and they gave him a scroll of Isaiah, and he stood up and read, the, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me. Can we look at Luke chapter, I mean, Luke chapter 4, verse 16? Can we read from verse 16? He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue. He was brought up there, but he was not born there. He was brought up there. He did not have destiny of origin there. He was there by adoption because his destiny was to be fulfilled in a place like that. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. And he stood up to read scripture. Give me next verse. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. Next verse 1. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed he has appointed me he has set me, he has made me ready to preach good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed. Why will he have to speak this in Galilee? Because in Galilee they needed this they were the people in darkness that's where his ministry started they were the people with trouble the captives were sitting down there. Captivity was associated with that place. Blindness was associated with that place. Poverty was associated there. And he said, I'm the light of the world. So his destiny was had to be fulfilled where he will make impact. The only relevance you have in life is destiny. And the only way to fulfill destiny is to be where you are meant to be. And the whole of your battle in life is in this area where you are meant to be and what you are meant to do. If you are doing what you shouldn't do, you may not have trouble. If you are where you shouldn't be, you may not have any fight. 
if you are where you should be doing what you should do, you will have fight. I don't know where I'm coming. Am I communicating? Glory to God. Can you rise? Raise your right hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every battle against my destiny, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I overthrow, I overthrow, I overthrow, I overthrow. Raise your right hand and speak, I overthrow. Battles against my destiny. You are not speaking. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are more likely to feel comfortable somewhere else except in the place of your destiny. That's why a lot of people born into families where they are meant to change that family, they are the first to hate the family. Don't know the kind of family I was born into. This useless family. That's why you are there. Others who do not see the uselessness, they don't complain. You complain because you see and you see because you are the solution. <laughs> and your relevance is tied to your destiny sincerely. Sin has a lot to do with your, with your location, with your position, with your disposition. Write down those words. Destiny has a lot to do with your disposition your position, your location. Your disposition, your position, your location. Okay. While you write that, let's look at that scripture. Let's, let's just finish this. He said, he, he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed. Next verse. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's Jubilee. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. Next verse. And he began by saying to them, today. What did he say? It means this destiny is fulfilled today in this place. I am the light that the darkness of Galilee has been waiting for. Before somebody will question in John chapter 1, can anything good come from Nazareth? He was telling to them, today it has been fulfilled that something good can come from Nazareth. That should have brought a reception, right? Everything being equal, you will expect that they will kill cow and start dancing. Say, oh, something beautiful has come out of Nazareth. Oh, men, we are no longer in darkness. It is not true. See what is true. Next verse. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. But that's not all. Isn't this Joseph's son? First of all, they say, oh, these are beautiful words. These are excellent words. The only problem we have is that they come from Joseph's son. If it came from somebody from Jerusalem, that would be okay. Do you notice something in Aquaibom State? We celebrate foreigners more than we celebrate ourselves. If it is of you, it's true more of my villagers. I grew up where in my little community, if you came from Oro or Ibibi, if everybody wanted to be your friend, even if your father cannot eat, you came, your father was a, a, a bike repairer, and you people struggle. Everybody wants to befriend you. Why? You are not from there. If you are from there, if you dance, it's not good enough. Anything you do, it's called Nazareth. These are deep things. The scripture says, they spoke well. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Let's understand that. 
they spoke well of him because of the things he had. They had. Oh, these are wonderful things. This is real wisdom. I mean, this is gifts. But the only problem is that we know the Father. How do we reconcile this? That somebody from this place, this must be fake. It cannot be true. Go Eunice are room. When did they start doing this? <laughs> the greatest gift God has given me many gifts. One of them is courage. My first album, Come Holy Spirit, I'm in your one of our Father. For all you have been to me, in spite of myself, all that. When I was trying to make that album, the people I expected to encourage me, but one I was so surprised. Instead of facing your priesthood, a young boy, instead of facing your priesthood, you are trying to distract yourself. When I started being on radio, do you have what it means to sustain this? Better look, look for a group of people. Oh. You cannot do this alone. You must have a team of people. So that one will speak one week. The other one will speak another week. The other one will speak another week. That was the reason. Because it's like, you are not sufficient. Have you been, uh, do you have doctorate? Have you been to Rome? Do you study in Rome? 15 years have passed. Where you are fought is where you are meant to change. Okay. Let's go back to this. You see, the problem is that we know Joseph. Isn't this Joseph's son? They ask. That's not all, though. They had a problem with Joseph. Joseph was not prominent enough. A son of Joseph shouldn't speak like this. Be seated. Where was Joseph educated? This carpenter. So where did he get to? Where did he get education from? Joseph is known for carpentry, not for scripture. So where did he become a prophet? Tell him when he wants to deceive people, he should go outside so that they will tell us. And my mother used to tell me, you know, I like, I like Asian. No, I don't know whether I still like Asian, but I, when I was a young boy, so I'm watching my children. So I would dress up and move around like this in the house. Very little thing. Oh. Dress up like, take my brother's trouser, fold it, fold it, look for something and tie it. Look for my brother's shirt, fold it, fold it, and tuck it in. And it will be like one big, um, one big whatever. And I will walk like this in the house. Everybody's walking. My mother would tell me, Have you seen a Masian goof up? I will not forget it. My father, my mother was the first person to tell me, if you want to shine, go and shine out there. Don't come and disturb us. Mama, bye. Absolutely. I love my mother. Again, I said, so, me, I would just be, I'm, I'm trying to like impress people that this is a superstar who will change this family. And all that. And what I said, Ben Pomi Kawa. I have my daughter and my son. I will not tell them. I'll say, shine. Shine. Start here and shine. And I'm not blaming my mother because that's what she knew. I will be worse than my mother if I had not if I will not know more than what she knew. She was not educated, not because she wouldn't like education. She was not given opportunity, no exposure, nothing. But now I'm raising champions. So we do stuff at home. All sort of stuff. So we shine at home. All sort of dance. All sort of things that we do, domestic shining. Because we cannot shine outside until we first of all shine at home. Absolutely. Create an environment in your house where destinies can shine. Let a mechanic be mechanical at home. 
Let somebody who will change the world in fashion start run runway show at home. Dress something and walk quick, quick. Say, oh, they are the best. Make somebody because we kill destinies because we don't give them grounds. That's why somebody had to say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth, me for effort. Nazareth is one the, the first ikori fort kid that I see in the scripture. Who be fort? Isn't this Joseph's son? We have problem with Joseph. This man doesn't know scripture. He knows how to. The other day I gave him my table to make. He has not returned the table. Go and tell your father to return my table. You can't bomb you. You go and help your father to finish my table next verse <laughs> next verse Jesus said to them surely you will quote this proverb for me physician heal yourself do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum next verse I tell you the truth he continued no prophet is accepted in his this is the problem. That you have to fight to change where you were supposed to change. Because there, they will reject you. They will hate you. They will abuse you. Will make you feel you are not good enough. It started with Jesus. The first battle. God spoke to me in 2000. Should be about 2006, 2007. The first place that ministry started, Grace Family started, God told me the greatest battle you will fight in this life will be battle over your destiny. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, not once, not twice. Every time that I was deep in prayer, I will hear it. The greatest battle you will fight in this life, this life will be the battle over your destiny. I knew contention was coming. But that's not what I want to share with you. First Kings. First Kings chapter 21. From verse 1 to 14. First Kings chapter 21. From verse 1 to 14. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in, his, in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab king of... When we talk about vineyard, it means something appointed for you. Every land has an appointment. Every land has a destiny associated with it. Every land has ownership. If it is not yet claimed, somebody will claim it one day. So land has to do with destiny. When you see land in the scripture, it is connected to destiny. When God told, uh, told uh, uh, Abraham, Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, leave your father's house, leave your country, and leave your, your, your hometown, your, your people, leave your father's house, your people and your country. And go to a place that I will show you. He was telling him, leave this destiny. It was a change of destiny. It was a change of destiny and a change of purpose. I've tried to study a little bit about the background, the roots of, of Abraham. It was not a beautiful destiny. Where it comes from. So I studied the root, the story of his delay. Abraham has problem. The root of Abraham, his great great grandfather and great grandfather and father and father, they had problem with delay. I studied it. Go and study the genealogy of Abraham. They have problem with delay. And God said, "Leave your father's house, leave your people, leave your country to a land where I will." Shoot. Abandon this useless destiny. You are made ready to fail. You are made ready for delay. You are made ready for fruitlessness. You are made ready for unproductivity and unprofitability. Leave this and I will show you another world. I will show you another destiny. Glory to God. I'm excited this morning. Just feel like preaching. Okay. Now, so the land, and it came to pass that this, this man Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard a land which was in Jezreel, next to the place, to the palace of King of Ahab, King of Samaria. Next verse, run with me. So Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard. This is what happens. Ahab, who is Ahab here? 
a man with weight, with influence, with capacity, authority, principality, power. Give me your destiny. I will swap it for something. I will give you something else. Or pay you out, bail you out, give you pleasure, but don't fulfill your destiny. Give you fun, but don't fulfill your destiny. Give you some moi moi. Maybe give you sex. Sexual pleasure. Maybe plenty of food. Maybe some money. But the point is that don't stay in your destiny. Which means enjoy sex and not be relevant. Enjoy money, but you are not relevant. Because it's only in your destiny that you are relevant. And this is what the devil is constantly doing. A lot of people have been bought out of their destiny. They enjoy pleasure. Irrelevant. Because they have sold their destiny. This is the pressure that was upon Esau. Esau said, what is, the, what is the need of this destiny of birthright? And I'm, I'm, I'm famished. I want to eat. Give me something to eat, Jared. Take this thing if you like to. Take it. He, he sold it and ate destiny. Pressure for you to sell destiny. Pressure for you to, to let go destiny. Pressure for you to back out. Pressure. Look at this. Give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is, next, it is near me. What is wrong with my own destiny near your own? What is the problem? There's something about that. There's something attractive about what God has made you to be that the enemy doesn't like. There's something. That's why if you don't even know, if you don't even know who you are in Christ, what you've been made ready for, what your relevance is, then you will easily say, okay, give me pleasure now. Just take it now, like Esau. That is why every Esau-minded person will never become relevant in life. Somebody who is ready to settle for pleasure and let go value and glory and future. You must be able to fight. You must be get ready to fight. You must get ready to resist. The scripture says you will resist the devil and the devil will do what? Flee from it. Pay attention to this revelation because you're going to pray with it. This is a prayer assignment. It's not preaching. If you sit down here and listen to me, there are pressures on your son. Do you know children go to school, drugs will tell them, drugs will tell them, go high and forget about being an engineer. So, early sex, young children, young girls and boys who go to the university, especially, especially children that their parents, like when you say, you know, there is a trend now. Our children are in Ghana. Our children are in Togo. Our children... <laughs> go and see our children helpless in all these small places. When you go to Ghana, a Nigerian is a celebrity. They have plenty of money. Ghanaians are very thrifty. They don't spend money. So the Ghanaian girls and these little boys who just go, a lot of them get, they are lost. And now Nigerians no longer have respect in Ghana. These young people, Ghana, and then the parents, the parents will just bless them with plenty of money. And then, because a lot of parents want to show, Ian Minkok and will get Ghana. A lot of competition of where is your own. There are people that they have enough money to send their children out. There are those they don't even have enough money to take care of themselves. And they don't even have reason to say, why do you even send your child to Ghana? Self? When they come back, what do they become? There was one young man in, in a place, interview was taking place, two young people were to be taken. One was in uni, you made first class degree. And um, I saw the other one that I'd known some years ago. He said, I was in Kwame Kroma, blah, 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 University of Ghana. He saw my bona rat, Ghana. But during the interview, eventually, I was told this other young person from UNU made him irrelevant, flawed him. Because I had introduced him to the people, I, want, I don't want to go into details. 
The people are people close to me. So I had it. Oh, I know this young man. I know this. Old. So whatever it is, consider him. And this other young boy was sitting down. So the following day I went. So I saw him at the reception. He said, what are you doing here? We have an interview for this, this, this. So I went back and told the Eshar. Eshar, I have a young man there that I know for a long time. So pay attention to him. He said, okay, whatever you want to do. Which means they have already made up their mind. They will take him. When I went back, they fully, as I was going, the Holy Spirit reminded me. Before you... Before you talk about that, find out what is the capacity of the other boy. So the following week, when I went there, I went straight to the Esha. How did the interview go? He said, ah, we have been trying, waiting for you to see what we can do because we needed to hear from you first. That this young boy from you, you flawed this Ghanaian person. <laughs> That they were not equal at all. They didn't belong to the same level. This little boy beat him hands down. I said, and so what? Take the young boy and let the... <laughs> will be in justice of the highest order to, to destroy a destiny of, a, of an excellent person. To honor one heavy looking person who went to Ghana. Just because you went to Ghana and I have known you. Must you not fail just because I, really, I knew you? That's how, how, it, how it works. So a lot of young people, they just go there. A lot of, they, they just go. Drugs will tell them. Young women will tell them. See, a lot of young people, they are doing well until they get to the university. They get distracted. The first two, three years, before they discover, they have lost out. Drugs have taken them. Prostitution. Young girls dressing naked. All sorts of things. Why? Every time you are in a place that will lift you up, there are things telling you, sell your destiny. Swap it. It is near me. Let me take over. Let me give you something that looks like this, but it's not this. Or, let me give you pleasure. Let me give you some money. And so many people walk around with exchange destinies. This is the revelation God has given me for you this morning. Are you, are you actually carrying your destiny? Or are you carrying the money that you have sold your destiny for? It's a generation of people. You see a car, like people come to church. You see somebody who drives a beautiful car. And, and, and you, you go close. And you just run to us and say, do you know what is inside the car? Do you know what the car is about? And so you are praying, let this person give me a lift. Give you a lift to hell. Don't you know you carry what is inside of you that if you develop, you will drive the best of cars in the future. As a young woman, you have to reach a point that somebody offers you a lift saying, thank you so very much. I know my way. Must be as a young man that somebody, you know, plays your things that are cheap. He said, thank you so very much. I will not offer my God anything that costs me nothing. And by the way, I will not walk through the path of life that costs me nothing. This is what I've been trained for, for years. To discover that glory is on unfamiliar paths. To get to the destination that will make you a blessing to the world, you must get, to, you must get ready to go through paths unknown, uncharted territories. Refuse to sell your destiny. Refuse to give it in exchange for anything, in exchange for popularity, in exchange for pleasure, in exchange for leisure, in exchange for some, some holidays, some rest, some connection. That oh, just, just to be close to me, give up this. To be close to the, you don't, no way. You look at a young man who wants to, he's talking, I want to settle down, but I don't like the way you people spend time in church. That your pastor, like this, you are dealing with the devil. I don't care whether the father is a governor, a mother is a governor. You are dealing with the devil. There is always a hap that doesn't want you to treasure your destiny. Why? Your uniqueness is in your destiny. 
Your relevance is in your destiny. Your future is in your destiny. Your contribution is in your destiny. Your power is in your destiny. Your weight is in your destiny. Refuse to sell it. Can you stand up and say something? Raise your right hand because you have to raise. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, my destiny is not for sale. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, my purpose will not be exchanged. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, no one is big enough to take over my life. No one is large enough to take over my life. Pray that prayer. Say, I resist, I resist. In the name of Jesus Christ. Next verse. But Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my destiny. I didn't pray for this. It was handed over to me. I didn't pray to carry this microphone. Absolutely. When I used to dress and make Nyanga in my father's house, I was trying to announce to them one day I will make the show of God before people. I was, I was made ready to showcase something. And when I met Christ for the first time, I discovered that it was not my trouser I was to show, like I did in the village, in, the, in my family, my, in my house, that it was God and his glory. I can stand here for hours and talk about him. I don't lack words. I can talk about him from one scripture for days. I don't lack word. Why? I was made ready for this. I don't pray to preach. I pray to preach in the anointing of God because you can preach like rhetorics and it does not change his soul. So I pray and fast so that what I see will be alive and active. But as for opening my mouth, once I opened my mouth, I was made ready to say something. If I don't say sense, I will say nonsense. But I must say something effortlessly. There is something you were made ready for. If you come into Christ, it becomes your wealth, your uniqueness, your glory, your salvation. This is it. Anybody who is very social, a social mixer and all that, find out there is wealth hidden in that. Absolutely. Those who have the grace of social relationship, people just are comfortable. If you have an eye for fashion and you, you, you see beautiful dresses and all that, and it means you can make wealth out of it without ever knowing how to sew. It's just about connecting. Every, everything that comes to you natural, there is wealth in it. There's glory in it. There's relevance in it. If you are made ready for something. Lift up your tongue and say, from today in the name of Jesus Christ, I covenant not to be irrelevant. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will never be irrelevant. Say, I receive revelation about my uniqueness, what I was appointed for, what I have been made ready for. Say, Ahab, I am not giving you my destiny. Say, Ahab, whether you are the half of witchcraft, whether you are a half of occult, whether you are the half of marine immoral kingdom, I am not selling my I am not selling my destiny. Pray the prayer. I am not selling. I am not giving up. I am not giving up. I am not giving up. My destiny is not for sale. And I will not die because of it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear your amen like fire. Naboth did something wonderful. Said I will not, I will not sell. But Naboth didn't have a strong spirit to resist death. So it's not enough to say. I will not allow my destiny to be hijacked. If you don't know God. The one that wants to take your destiny will take your life. Because at some point in life, it's either your destiny or your life. These are the battles of destiny. 
That's why some people die young. If you die young, it's because you could. The scripture says, if a man fails on the day of adversity, his strength was small. Naboth's strength was small. You must say no to destiny swap. You must say no to destiny hijackers. You must say no to destiny buyers. Then you must stay alive. The scripture says, to my God belongs escape from death. When you know God, you have escaped from death. You must speak. These are things you speak at midnight. Nobody will sell my destiny. Nobody will buy my destiny. Nobody will take what belongs to me. Nobody will marry my husband. Nobody will marry my wife. Every day of my life, including this morning, I woke up and I'm grateful to God that nobody married my wife and I didn't marry anybody. It's one of the things that I am so grateful to God for that nobody married my wife until I, she met me. And, 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 and my wife married and totally accepted accepted to marry me. Wow! What a beautiful thing. I'm so grateful to God because I don't know who else could have managed this, this thing standing here. I don't know who else will have put up with me. I don't know who will have taken care of my nonsense. I don't know who will have endure my queerness and my wetness. I don't know who else will love me the way she loves me and accept me the way she accepts me. It makes me look like I'm the best person when I know is. That's what you need. A destiny helper is somebody who's comfortable with you and allows you to be comfortable in your skin. You talk nonsense, but she puts it in perspective. So you must, as a young girl, very early in life, don't wait till it's late. Begin to speak, nobody will marry my husband. And as a young man, you must begin to speak. Nobody will marry my wife. My wife, wherever you are, you cannot make mistakes. You cannot see any man that will you, you get out. You will not marry my wife. Get out of my wife. Get out, get out, get out. When you are you have not even seen the person you are so young. And as a father, before you even start having children, you have to start praying. You want to pray? All of you, you want to pray? Raise your right hand. Pray, pray. Just go ahead and pray. Young girls, pray. Nobody will marry my husband. My husband will marry me. No one will marry my wife. My wife will marry me. No one will take over my life. Speak over your children. <laughs> Speak over your children. Yeah, the hallowed one. And yeah, the holy one. Yahweh. The king of Zion. Speak it out. Nobody would take my place in life. Nobody would take what belongs to me. No one will, st will steal my destiny. No one will exchange my destiny for something. Nobody will buy me out from my glory. Nobody will buy me out from my honor. Yahweh, the King of Zion, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's wrap up this scripture. I'm sure you have seen something to pray. That was a young woman. Pray until this burden is lifted from you. And for those of you, just run around every man that comes. As long as it looks like something, you just run. You don't even know where you are going. You don't even know your destiny. And just see every young woman, and you will not, you will not, you will not sleep at night. You can no longer pray. You are discomfort. You are completely disconnected and disoriented. You don't even know. You just, you are so cheap, easily bought. It's always a pressure that tells you give up your future, give up your vision, give up where you are going to. You are taking a decision yesterday, but today you are letting it go because you have seen something. Ahab is that thing. Say, give me your destiny because it's close to me. What is wrong with me also living close to the palace? What's wrong with me living close to the palace? What is wrong with me being associated with royalty? Ahab, what is wrong with me? being associated with kingship. Ahab, have I asked you not to be a king? 
if you are a king at least shouldn't I live close to the kingship Ahab what is wrong with me being close to now you understand what I'm talking about say it's close to me and so what close to you so what's wrong with that I didn't choose it I didn't choose it this is what it is and it is what it is it's my destiny I'm royal I'm associated with royalty I'm associated with prosperity I was made to I was made to rule say Ahab I'm going to stay close to this palace whether you like it or not I'm, I have a place in royalty I have a place in government I have a place in government I have a place in power I was made for dominion so I'm not going to sell it what are the things telling you to give up your royalty let's make a covenant lift up our two hands say father in the name of Jesus Christ I stand in a covenant before you nobody will take my destiny and nobody will take my life I live in my destiny I prosper in my destiny go ahead and pray that prayer so speak sickness is gone weakness is gone Patrick Grace Henry is the president Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday, 8.30 a.m., Champions University, and subsequently, Extended Family Assembly, 10 a.m., aired live on Planet 101.1 FM, Uyo, Venue, Goshen, Kilometer 14, Mwaniba Road, Ekamba Sukara, Uyo, Akwaimom State. Join us live on Facebook and YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and via the Christ Radio app. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Partners and Friends of Grace Family Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0907-383-8742. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.